Praise the Lord, church. If we could all stand across the building this evening. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this evening? I could already feel the expectation. I feel like the Lord wants to move in our midst tonight. And I don't know about you, but I really am excited to be in the house of the Lord. I'm excited to call on His name. I'm excited to fellowship with Him tonight. And, and I just want to give Him all that I have right now. God, I worship you. Let's do that together, church, in one mind and one accord. Let's give Him what He is worthy of. Father, I worship you. And I, I praise you today, Jesus, because you're worthy to be praised, God. Uh, I lift up your holy name, Lord. Uh, I desire to bless your name tonight, God. Uh, I enter your courts with thanksgiving in my heart, Lord. I enter your courts with praise today, God. Uh, I lift up your name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, that's it, church. Uh, tell you something the weight of the day may be on your shoulders you may have gone through it today but one encounter with God changes everything one moment with God one encounter with him one moment in his presence can turn this day around amen hallelujah 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 I'm thankful for a God who is not afar off but I'm thankful for a God who is living and he is touched by what touches me he knows all that I go through he knows the number of hairs on my head I'm thankful for a God who desires to fellowship with me hallelujah 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 as the praise team comes church why don't you get engaged with that relationship why don't you engage with the Lord right now uh, you may be seated if you like hallelujah hallelujah let's keep worshiping him he's worthy to be praised hallelujah Jesus how many know there's no sweeter name than the name of Jesus what if you would just speak that name right now Jesus Jesus Lord, we speak your name in this place, God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. If you know it tonight, let's sing it together. No sweeter name. darkness around me you are the home to the hopeless and broken you are the only truth and the way anybody believe that tonight the only truth and the way no sweeter name no sweeter name, no sweeter name than the name of Jesus Why don't we lift a 
a hand right now and worship him. Hallelujah. Sing no sweeter name. No sweeter name than the name. Oh, there's no name that is higher than the name of Jesus. tonight, Lord, and I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's continue worshiping him tonight. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. If we can just tap into the presence of God tonight, everything can change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see you. 
Why don't we just lift him up right now, make it a personal statement. God, I exalt you today. I exalt you in my life. Far above every situation, far above every circumstance, God. Whatever the trial, whatever life's trials bring, Lord, I exalt you above, far above. Whatever this world throws my way, whatever the devil tries to whisper in my ear, you're far above it, Lord. I exalt you today, God. I exalt you today. Hallelujah. 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 I feel like it's a fitting point in the service to transition into praying for our needs today. The needs of the body. What we do when we present our needs to the Lord, we tell him, God, I exalt you above every need. Lord, I'm, I am invoking your name. When I call on the name of Jesus, I'm saying, God, you are above this sickness. God, you are above this disease. You're above this situation, Lord. I'm calling on your name because I know you are the one who's going to fix it. I know that you're the one who's going to provide. You're the one who's going to deliver. You're the one who's going to restore. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some needs to remember the Cisneros family. Pray for Brother Cisneros for his healing. Sister Melody Stewart, the Stewart family healing in Sister Melody Stewart's life. And, and Brother Gary Miller, Tim Miller's father. He is improving continually, but continue to keep him in your prayers. And if you have any needs in the house, any needs, go ahead and lift a hand up to the Lord in faith. If you need healing, if you need provision, maybe you're standing in the gap for a family member, go ahead and lift that hand up in faith faith church you see you see the needs presented by the hands lifted why don't you why don't you extend your prayers toward those who are presenting the need right now let's go to the lord right now in faith god we come before you today lord understanding god that you are able to meet every need every need of the body today god lord we call on the name of jesus i pray healing in brother cisneros's body right now god i pray healing in sister melody's too Stewart's body and brother Gary Miller's body God in the name of Jesus and I pray comfort and peace in the families Lord I pray for every need represented in this place God every financial need every physical need I rebuke sickness I rebuke cancer right now in the name of Jesus Lord I pray there would be testimonies from this prayer God there would be testimonies of your goodness testimonies of your mercy testimonies of your providence God we worship we worship you today, God. We worship you today. Hallelujah. Church, if you believe he's doing it, why don't you lift up a shout? Uh, why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord in faith? Uh, yes, God, we worship you. We praise you today, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. 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 And we're going to continue to be faithful in praying for our city, for our state, for this nation. You look outside and it's a dark, dark world, but my Bible tells me that, that we are to be the light, amen. We are be, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the earth, and that's what we're going to be, and that's what we do when we pray this prayer. We pray, God, your kingdom come, your will be done in Stockton as, as it is in heaven, and, and I like to pray, Lord, prepare us as laborers for your harvest. The Lord said that that the, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers, they are few. Look around. This is We are the laborers for the harvest. God, prepare us uh, to go and, and to reap the harvest that is called for this end time. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray for our city right now. Let's join together. Lord, Lord, we pray for the city of Stockton, God. We pray that your kingdom come and your will would be done in this city as it is in heaven. Lord, we speak to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west, to the principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness. We speak to you to let those that are called by the name of Jesus go. Let them go in the name of Jesus, God. And, and we pray, Lord, 
Lord, that you would prepare each and every one of us as laborers, God. Send angels right now to prepare the way for us, God, to go into that dark world and to manifest your light that the blind may see in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, Lord, that your spirit would be poured out from the highest government official to the poorest beggar on the street, Lord. Be with our officers. Be with our first responders, God. We believe in it today, God. Let this church be a lighthouse, God, in the darkness. Let it be a safe haven, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, and we'll be sure to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for the great revival that we are seeing in the name of Jesus. If anyone believes it, why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord? Hallelujah. I think we can do better than that. In faith, why don't you clap your hands? Why don't you lift a shout of praise? Jesus is the answer, amen. He is the answer, hallelujah. Y'all may be seated just for a moment, hallelujah. We have ladies advance coming up, amen. All the ladies, ladies advance, that's October 29th through the 31st. If you have not registered, I'm sure spots are filling up. Make sure you register and you get yourself there, hallelujah. And then we have... On November 7th, our God and Country service. Amen. If you need more information for that, see Brother John Raspberry or give the church office a call. We will direct you as needed. For our first responders and our military service members, come dressed in your uniform and, and we will honor you for all that you've done for our country. Amen. Amen. Let's stand one more time. Hallelujah. It's time for our Wednesday evening tithe and offering. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to present this offering in faith today. So if you have your offering, get it out, and we're going to present it to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to give to your kingdom, God. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this offering to strengthen your kingdom. Let your will be done, Lord. Let it be used to propel the gospel. Let it be used to strengthen this church, God. In the name of Jesus, bless every giver tonight, God. Bless the tithe. Bless the offering, Lord. Bless the giver, Lord. I pray, Lord, you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that they could not contain, Lord. Bless them as they give tonight in the name of Jesus. And everybody said... Amen. On the lower floor, you can march. On the balcony, they'll wait on you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you left us on a on a big high note right there. Amen. I was feeling the victory in the house of God today. Amen. How many know that God is more than enough, that he's more above and beyond what you even need to get by? Amen. That's right. That's the God that we serve today. Can we stand to our feet today? We're just going to get into the word of God right away today. Amen. And if you have your Bibles, why don't you open them up with me to the book of Romans chapter 6. With the help of God, I want to talk today about the power of the resurrection and what it means for our lives today I do believe that the Lord is going to help us today he's going to lift us up he's going to encourage us and teach us how to live in the power of the resurrection Romans chapter 6 says what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound certainly not how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection hallelujah amen let's pray that God would have his way today my desire is that the Lord would just have his way and that I would be a blessing to you all it's always an honor to come to this pulpit and minister the word of God and I do wish for us to receive a word from the Lord that would keep us going this week, amen, and encourage us and build us up to learn what it's like to have all that God has prepared for us to have. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We bless you today, God. We exalt your name, Lord Father. We magnify your name today because you are worthy to be magnified today. Your people have gathered together in this place, God, from the four corners of this city. We have gathered together in this place, Lord, to hear your word, to know you more, to be transformed by you. God, have your way in this place. I pray that spirit, God, that was ushered in this place a moment ago, a moment ago that it would just continue in the atmosphere tonight, God. Let it continue, God, in our hearts and in our minds, bringing life, God, to your people, resurrecting us, God, and bringing life, God, to our everyday lives, to our prayers, God, to the way that we live today. And we'll give you all the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you as you're seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. This is just the first of a few passages of Scripture that I would like to share with you so that we can see uh, how the Apostle Paul is communicating, communicates to the people of God. Now here in the book of Romans, we do know that he is talking to the Romans or the church that was present in the city of Rome. Now I want to take you to another book, and it's in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 25 and we're going to look into the book of Galatians to see the way that the Apostle Paul is communicating to the church of the living God we're going to learn from the Apostle Paul today chapter 5 verse 19 the word of God says now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred, contentious, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, 
murders, drunkenness, seems to go on and on and on, doesn't it? <laughs> Rivalries, okay, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who participate in such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I want to pause for a second before continuing on to verse 22, because while many of these are, um, are descriptions that perhaps you and I can easily write off and say, well, I don't practice that, that's for sure, right? You say, well, I'm not into sorcery, and I'm certainly not in idolatry, and I, I, I certainly don't participate in murders and in drunkenness. Uh, however, included in these, uh, in these works of the f- flesh is also hatred and contentions and jealousies, right? And it rivalries, okay? Dissensions amongst ourselves. Now, those, those are descriptors that hit a little closer to home because they're not quite the obvious ones. They're not the ones that we're practicing in some corner of the city, some kind of witchcraft like sorcery. And they're perhaps not adultery and these more of overt things, but they are things that can occur in our hearts and in our minds without anybody even knowing that they're They're there. It's very convicting. However, that's not the point that I want to focus on today. What I want to focus on is the transition that the Apostle Paul makes. Because after he lists all of those things, similar to what he did in Romans chapter 6, where he says that shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Of course not. How are we going to walk in sin if we've been baptized into Christ? We've been baptized into his resurrection. And then he switches gears in a similar away in verse 22 when he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It seems not to end just like the other list that we were reading here, right? Self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, there's one more passage that I want to take you to, and that's Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Yet another uh, uh, uh a city and the church that resides in that city in which the Apostle Paul was communicating to. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. And it says here, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Now let's skip over to verse 22. In verse 22, it says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I can go on and on and on in passages within Scripture that have this exact same characteristic. The Apostle Paul begins to describe the evil that can take hold of a human being. He says the fruit of the flesh is thus, thus, and thus. And he goes in Romans and he says we should not walk in sin. And in Ephesians he says, hey, let's put off the old man and then the Apostle Paul in these three different passages, he shifts gears and then he begins talking about the life that comes after we have died to our flesh, after we have died to sin, we, he then begins to describe the life that comes or, or is supposed to come after we have given up our old conduct and the old man, what the Word of God says, that we should put on the new man and be renewed in the spirit of our mind because it is the will of God for us to walk in the life that God has given us. 
the Word of God says that when you are baptized in Jesus' name, when you go under those waters in the name of Jesus, you are made into a new creation. Your sins are washed away, and God makes a covenant with you, and he gives you new life. When you come out of that water, you come with a clean slate and a covenant with God. And the Word of God says that just as you were baptized into Christ's death because Jesus Christ died and he died for our sins. He died for our mistakes. He died for, for the list that was mentioned here in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. He died for that great list of works of the flesh because we know that before we met Jesus Christ, that's exactly the kind of mind that we were in. We were haters. We were full of jealousy. We were full of perhaps all kinds of different things and different practices, but when God got involved in our lives, something changed. When the Spirit showed up, something happened. When we came to a Pentecostal altar and we received the gift of the Holy Ghost, something shifted in our life. And where there was death, now there is life. Where there is destruction and chaos, now there is peace and order. Does anyone have that testimony tonight? Has anyone ever experienced that? I know what it's like to walk down dead. They talk about the walking dead. I was the walking dead. But when I came to God, everything changed and everything shifted. Just as we're baptized into the death of Jesus, because the reason why Jesus Christ, he died, it's because he had to shed his blood for our sins. But that's not where the story ends. Jesus Christ did not just remain dead, but on the third day, he rose again in life and in power. Right? Where his death gives us access to the forgiveness of sins. It is his resurrection that gives us access to a new way of living. To new life. The apostle Paul, he says it himself. He says, look, if Jesus Christ had just died, then we are all wasting our time here. We're all just wasting our time. It's not enough that Jesus Christ just died on the cross. He needed to have risen again because his resurrection proves that he has power over death itself and the grave. And just as Jesus rose from the dead, he is also giving us life. Now, it is true that the life that God gives us is in part while we are on this earth. He gives us a renewing in our spirit, a renewing in our soul. Why? Uh, it, uh, it, why is it only in part? Because we are all still participating in life as mortal individuals. We are all going to die one day or another. Our life is going to, it's going to waste. Our bodies cannot last forever. But that's the thing about what Jesus Christ did. We have a great promise that when we die, it is not the end. That's not where your story ends. That's not where my story ends ends. In fact, uh, when this body dies, my soul remains alive. Why? Because to be absent from this place uh, is to be present with Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's why the Apostle Paul says uh, to live is Christ uh, and to die is gain. Because when I die, that's not the end. Uh, I'm still going to be in the streets of glory, praising and glorifying my God. What gives me the right to believe that? Because Jesus Christ didn't remain dead, but he rose from the grave, and he has power over death. That is that same power that's going to be working in us when he comes back from the, for his church. When he comes back in his second coming, the word of God says that the dead in Christ will rise. Wherever your dead body laid, God's going to resurrect your body, unite your soul with your body, and he will allow you to experience the exact same resurrection power. 
what's so wonderful about serving God and living for God right now is that he gives us access to resurrection power today. This is why Hebrews 6, it talks about, I believe it's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 5. It says that we have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world that is to come. Powers of a world that is coming. Powers from a world that doesn't belong here. What is that world? That is that world in heaven. That is that heavenly world. That because there is no sickness in that world, we can pull from the powers of the world to come. And we can pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And the sick can be healed. That power doesn't belong to this age. It belongs to another age when God is going to resurrect the bodies and he's going to correct every bodily, every bodily dysfunction and every bodily disease. It's taught, that power is going to manifest in its fullness in the resurrection that is to come. But meanwhile, we're in covenant with Jesus. And meanwhile, we pray in his name. We can access a power that was meant for an age in the future and we can pray that the kingdom of heaven would come now and manifest itself in our lives it's very powerful right because this means now that we have access to the power of the resurrection before the fullness of fulfillment is to come that's powerful this is why the apostle paul he must communicate this way why? Because the Apostle Paul knows it's not all about death. It's not all about not sinning. Living for God is not all about avoiding sin. But living for God is about walking in love and peace and power. This is the definition of our Christianity. You see, too many Christians today, they live a religion of restriction. They live their life as a Christian thinking that it's defined only by what we should not be doing. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't dress that way. I shouldn't talk that way. I shouldn't go there. And I shouldn't do these things and dress this way and talk this way. And our whole lives is full of no, no, no. Restrict, restrict, restrict. Don't go here and don't go there. Can I tell you that if your whole Christianity is defined by what you are not doing, you are only living in 50% of what God has destined for you to be God did not call you just so that you could stop sinning but that you so that you could receive life and life more abundantly he wants you to walk in power he wants you to walk in the demonstration of spirit and power he doesn't just want you to stop sinning he wants you to walk confidently as a child of God knowing that he is with you a Christian is not defined just because we don't commit adultery. It's defined by our devotion to God and our love for the things of God. Or Christianity is not just defined by not being afraid of the devil, but walking in faith that God can manifest in a supernatural way in our lives. Meanwhile, our Christianity is only defined by what we don't do. You're not even close to living the way that God has designed you to live. He doesn't just want you to die to your sin. He also wants you to walk in the power of the resurrection, in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Is anybody hearing the word of God today? Look, and what I am not saying is that you should go out and fornicate and that you can and that. No, 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 no. Holiness is both. Holiness is consecration unto the Lord. But what is consecration? Consecration is death, separation from the world. And consecration is separation unto God. You need both. Holiness is not just about separating yourself from the world. It's about devoting your heart and your mind to the things of God. You separate from the world unto the things of God. 
Too many of us have separated from the world, but we haven't come unto God. This is one of the most important places where I learned this lesson. Before coming to CLC, I was part of a ministry uh, that reached out to a lot of gang members in Watsonville, California. And this youth group would convert lots and lots of gang members, even gang members from rival, uh, rival factions. In Watsonville, there was a big, uh, there was big rivalry between Norteños and Sureños. And uh, we would bring them together and they would come to God and God would save them and they would be restored and they would be renewed. But something very interesting happened. It's that their lives, because they were used to occupying all of their time with sinful activity and going out and partying and going to different areas, their whole life, every minute of their day was occupied with actions that led them to chaotic minds and sinful actions and darkness and such that when they came to God and God changed them in the altar, when they would go back home on a Monday and a Tuesday, they didn't know what to do with themselves. Because instead of going out and hanging out with friends and going out and partying and going out and doing what they used to do, now they're just sitting at home with nothing to do. They're sitting at home empty with no actions, not filling their time with anything. That's where I really learned this principle very clearly. It's because these individuals who are used to living a life that was consumed by sinful activity, when they came into the things of God and they were changed and transformed, they couldn't afford not to fill their days with activities that got them close to God. They had to fill their Monday with reading the Word. They had to fill their Tuesday with listening to preachings online. They had to fill their Wednesday with coming to church. They have to fill their Thursday with listening to worship music. They had to fill their time with living in the resurrection. Because meanwhile, they weren't sinning. Their life was empty and not full of anything. But it's not the will of God for us just to stop sinning. we got to walk towards Him. Him, and we got to move towards our God. And we have to occupy our time with living for him. It's not good enough just to not go here and not go there. we got to come to God and we got to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. we got to talk about God when we're walking along the way. Hey, we got to talk about God when we're going to work. we got to talk about God when we're going to sleep. we got to talk about God when we raise up in the morning. we got to talk about God in everything that we do. we got to fill our days with the Lord this is living in the resurrection see too many of us we create domains and we create compartments where God just doesn't fit in there God doesn't fit in my work God doesn't fit in these places and when I hang around around with these friends but if you want to live in the power of the resurrection you got to introduce God to every area of your life you got to take your Bible to work and you got to read it in your break room. You got to worship the Lord when you get the chance. And if God is calling you to worship, you got to take some time away from your work and go into your car. Just lift up your hands and worship the Lord wherever you are. You got to listen, listen to worship songs on your way home. And you'll be surprised what's going to happen. Sometimes God is going to invade your territory and the power of the Holy Ghost is going to take control. I've had moments in my life where I've had to pull over because the Holy Ghost has taken control and I just can't drive anymore. Why? Because my God is coming into my life and I'm learning to live in the power of the resurrection. You have begun living in the power of the resurrection when God begins to saturate and fill every day of your life. Every relationship that you have. Every friendship that you have. And, and that's the problem because many times we hold on to things that we're not ready to let go of. So we're not ready to introduce God to that area. And in that area, what needs to happen is we need to die and then we need to resurrect. We need to kill the work of our flesh 
and then we need to live for God and introduce the resurrection into our lives. This is a very powerful principle. If you apply this to your life, this is what is available to us, especially if you pro uh, apply this to your practice of prayer. Because so many times as Pentecostals, we practice a prayer that is only full of death. Let me give you an example. For example, when the enemy is attacking us and we brute rebuke Satan, perhaps maybe fear is wanting to take hold of our lives. And as a Pentecostal, we say, I rebuke every spirit of fear. I rebuke every demonic uh, influence over my life. And, and we rebuke the enemy and we rebuke Satan. But then we never take the time to introduce the full circle, the resurrection to our lives. Right? Because what is supposed to replace fear? God's will is not that you would stop being afraid. God's will is that you would start having faith. If you've only stopped being afraid, you only got half of it. You only died. But you need to resurrect. Am I talking to anybody? It's not enough for you just to not feel anxiety anymore. It's not enough for you just to not feel depression anymore. God's will is not just that you stop feeling depression, but also that you feel joy, that you feel love, that you feel peace. That is the resurrection. That is the life that God is calling you to. Yeah. The truth is this, people of God, that one prayer of faith is more powerful than 10 prayers in fear. One prayer of faith is more powerful than 10 prayers of fear. You know what rebukes fear from our life? It's not faith. Faith is actually not the antidote to fear. The word of God says that perfect love casteth out all fear. Right? So many times we're full of anxieties and fear about our future. And we're trying to pray, God, Take this fear. Take this anxiety away. I don't know what's going to happen in my life. I don't know what's going to happen in the days to come, in the months to come. Listen, we're all human, and we go through that ourselves. Everyone has to go through that in their life one time or another, or in my occasion, it's happened multiple times, and it likely will happen again. And when it happens, I need to remember that it is not that I need faith to get this fear and this anxiety of what's coming in the future out of my heart and my mind it is a revelation of God's love it's a revelation of his perfect love towards me why is it that love is what casts out fear it's because when you know and you have a revelation of how much God loves you and he cares about you and he cares about you the, the good the, the well-being of your soul then you will be able to stay in peace you will be able to stay still and know that he is God and it doesn't matter what might come your way because life may be chaotic but you have a God that loves you and you got have a God that cares for you he is the foundation and the rock that you stand on he is the foundation and the life of your soul that's why it's love that casts out fear, not faith. So the next time that you're having this attack of fear and anxiety in your mind, stop asking God to take the fear away. Instead, try saying, God, give me a revelation of how much you love me. Give me a revelation of how much you care about me. That is praying in the resurrection. Not so you just can stop feeling anxiety, but you can start experiencing the life of the love of God. Wow. This is what God desires. This is the nature of who God is. It's not just a matter of not, 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 and stop, 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 and don't do that, and don't do this. It's a matter of do this and do that. I have set you free from prison so that you can live in life. That's the will of God. You know, this nature is also in the very nature of the word of God. If we look at the nature of the word of God, it works the exact same way. We can see this in Jeremiah's call, the prophet Jeremiah. 
If you look at chapter 1, verse 10 of the book of Jeremiah, he calls Jeremiah to prophesy uh, in Israel. And he says, I am going to put my word in your mouth. And this is why in verse 10 it says, I'm going to put my word in your mouth to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down. That's death. I've called you, and I've put my word in your mouth to root out like a plant. Root out the evil. Take it out. To pull down the structures that the enemy has set up within our minds and our hearts. To pull it down. To destroy the work of the enemy. To throw down and to cast down the work of the enemy. But then it says, to build and to plant. Whoo! That's the will of God. To root out and in place where that, those roots of pain, those roots of bitterness, those roots of unforgiveness where they were left, where they were pulled out, and where there was left nothing, then the word of God comes and it plants something so that something can grow. He, the, and God tears down the work of the enemy in our lives, not just to clear out the area, but also to build his own building, to put his own thoughts in your mind, to put the power of his resurrection in you, and for you to be a testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is anyone hearing the word of the Lord today? Hallelujah. We love you, God. We love you, God. In this sense, God has not just called us. He's not just destined us to be delivered from our enemies, but to have victory over them as well. It's not just deliverance. It's victory. Hey. Yes. Can we stand to our feet today? I dare not say more than what the Lord has placed in my heart to share with you today. I really believe that as we learn to walk in the resurrection, life is going to come to you. Life is come, going to come to your everyday life. When you learn this principle and you apply this principle to your prayers, you apply it to the way that you live every day. God's going to do something really special in your life. The, the, the sense of, of condemnation, of fearing to fail God, fearing to fall, fearing not being faithful, is many times the result of our focus on the death of sin. But really what we should be desiring is life. We should be desiring to live righteously and holy and consecrated, not just separate from the world, but unto the things of God. Now, many times it, it may be hard to, to, uh, to quite understand exactly what I'm saying because it's, it's almost like saying, well, three plus two equals five and two plus three equals five. It's one of the same. But really, there is a difference in the perspective. There's a difference in the perspective. It is different living your life trying not to sin than living your life trying to please God. Although they produce actions that may look similar in your heart, it does something different. Something different happens in your soul. Something different happens in your mind. When your goal, and it's the same thing when it comes to hell and heaven, right? Right? It, the same thing is, 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 is sal salvation works the same way. Us coming to God is more than just trying not to go to hell. My goal is not to avoid hell. Right? It, it, not that I want to avoid hell. I desire to be with God. Hey, I desire to live with the Lord. It's more than just being afraid of hell or not wanting to burn in the lake of fire. It's bigger than that. It's greater than that. I want to walk on the streets of gold and I want to meet God on the other side. I want to know who he is. Hey, I want to see him for myself. Come on. I want to talk to him for myself. It's bigger than not going to hell. I want to know who my God is because that's the purpose of the resurrection.
That's the purpose of the resurrection of Christ. If I can invite the praise team to come up, just sing whatever, whatever you got the Lord puts in your heart. That's what the Lord wants of us today. Can we just pray right now for a few moments and just ask God to have his way in our lives? God is calling somebody tonight to live in the power of the resurrection today. There is somebody has been living in condemnation and in fear for way too long, too long. But God wants to give you life today. Hallelujah. He wants to give you life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you life everlasting and the power of the resurrection in your soul. As the praise team ministers this song today, let's just let God have his way. These altars are open. Whoever wants to come, if you want to pray there in your pew, that's all right too. If you want to come up to the altar and just say, God, I want all that you have for me. I want to live in the power of the resurrection today. I want to feel joy again. Hallelujah. The spirit of God is moving. Maybe you need to come to this altar and say, God, I want to feel peace again. <laughs> I want to feel the joy of life again. I want to stop living just not trying to. I want to live in victory. I want to live in all that you have provided for me. All that you want for me. That's what I want to have. God's going to give it to you. God's going to minister it to you. He's going to minister peace to your heart. He's already doing it. I feel the spirit uh, moving in this altar. He's already giving you life. He's already giving you help. Uh, he's already revealing to you how much he loves you. How much he cares for you. How much he cares for your soul. Receive it today. Raise your hands and receive it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Pour it out, God, today. Pour it out. Pour out a move of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Pour out the power of the resurrection tonight, God. I rebuke, God, every attack of the enemy. I rebuke every spirit of fear today. And I pray that a spirit of revelation of your love would be poured out, poured out in this building tonight, God. I rebuke every spirit of condemnation, Lord God. And I pray that a revelation of your love, faith, would grip our hearts and our minds tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you my heart. Yes, Lord, do it, God. Do it, God, tonight. Do it in our lives, God, tonight. Teach us to live in the power of the resurrection. Teach us to live in victory, God, today. In the name of Jesus.
is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship. Oh